Welcome into the Walsh College Creator Lab. Today I have with me Nick Peoples. And Nick has, in the very limited time I've already had this conversation with him, I love Nick. He is just <laughs> such a fun person. He's such a great personality. And I'm really excited to dive into this conversation. Not only are you a current doctoral student and looking to uh, get your DBA, but you also completed the dual MBA and yes. the Master's of Marketing. Yes. So you are quite the educated person at this point, and I love that. Yes, I kind of like to call myself uh, a, a student, like uh, a lifetime student. I love it. Lifetime yeah. student, there's nothing wrong with that because I, I do think that one of the fun things is finding new things that you love. Yes. And I, I don't know about you, but as I got later in life, I started to realize that education was way more fun than when I was a kid. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause you're actually going to something that you like, you that actually you enjoy do, that you're interested in. For sure. Absolutely. For sure. So Nick, I'm going to, I'm going to let you kind of introduce yourself here a little bit. Talk to me a little bit about, um, about your background. I know we talked, touched on you being a student, but talk to me a little bit about your background and then we'll dive right in. Okay. Thank you. Um, of course my name is Nicholas Peoples. Uh, I am a father of six in total. Nice. Um, I have four of my own children and two what we like to call bonus children. Um, me and my wife just recently had a baby girl. Congratulations. Serenity. I love you, baby. <laughs> um, and uh, I am a professional uh, who has most of my experience in the customer service realm. Um, in a variety of industries, okay. uh, flooring, uh, currently I'm in the printer industry where we, um, repair, uh, sell, um, and replace printers for okay. companies across the country. Um, but most of my professional career is surrounded around customer service. Um, I have been at Walsh since 2019. Okay. Um, love the school, love the curriculum, love the people, love the teachers, um, and just everything that Walsh offers, um, it has been very uh, much of a struggle to kind of work as well as uh, do classes at night. But, you know, when you're really dedicated and determined to do something, you know, I'm kind of one of those people. When yeah. I put my mind to it, I'm going to do it. If I make a goal, I'm going to do everything I can to reach it. Yeah. Well, it sounds like, especially with that, uh, that education background, having a dual MBA and, an, and a master's in marketing. And now going for your doctoral, that's a very structured life that you have to set for yourself. Yes. And yes. having the motivation and finding motivation. Now I'm, I would assume finding the motivation in your kids is a big one. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, when I finished the, the master's program, um, I said, okay, I'm done. No more school. <laughs> like I've, I, you know, I, I've got this master's. I should be good. You know, like uh, I, I'm done. And I didn't make it a full year before uh, Amy G, uh, who I love. <laughs> hey, Amy G, shout out to you. Um, she, you know, just kind of uh, convinced me and showed me like that the doctoral program might be something for me. Mm -hmm. um, and when I looked at it, um, you know. The thing that really stuck out was the two percent. Yeah, uh, they always say the two percent thing, where you know there's only two percent of the people in the country that have a doctoral degree, and I guess that's kind of vain. But that was kind no. of one of my no. motivations. No, that was how they started to try and get me. Is they started going, <laughs> yeah, but doesn't Doctor Kruger sound better? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I was like, you know, you got something there. No, that's, that's what got me. <laughs> it, Doctor Peoples sounds very good. It does. Um, but then also, you know, there's nobody in my family that has. As a doctoral yeah. degree. Um, I'm the only person in my family, the immediate family that has a, a, mar a master's degree. So yeah. um, part of that is kind of being that, uh, that, that example, mm -hmm. you know, to all of the younger people, uh, not only within my family, but anybody that, that I, I come across, For sure. um, especially with, you know, kind of my, my background and my story is very, yeah. Unique. So that's, so I want to get into that because I, I think that I, I think that what you're talking about and how you got to where you are today is so much formed by your past. Yes. So I want to dive into it a little bit. So let's start, let's start super early on. Okay. So where'd you grow up? I grew up, I was born in Warren, uh, grew up, um, in the Clinton township, Mount okay. Clemens area. Um, you know, smaller towns. Um, uh, so everybody knows everybody. Yep. But uh, very unique type of ecosystem in both of those places. For sure, for sure. Um, 
So you went to went to high school around Warren Mount Clemens area. Graduated from Mount Clemens. High. Graduate. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then class what? of two thousand, baby. <laughs> um, and then what happened after after high school? Uh, I actually uh, had my first son before I finished high school. Okay. Um, my uh, ex wife was pregnant um, when she was fifteen. Actually, we were both fifteen, going on sixteen. So at sixteen, I had a kid. Okay. Um, did what I needed to do to finish high school. Left high school um, and just, you know, kind of started living life. Ended up getting married to uh, my son's mother. We had another uh, child. Um, and then I started school um, at Becker College okay. for my uh, my um, bachelor's degree. I knew I needed to do something to set myself up to be able to earn mm-hmm. uh, enough to support my family. Uh, so that was my motivation to start school. Um, so I was in school f- uh, for about three years at Baker, um, you know, studying for my uh, bachelor's in business administration. Um, in 2009, um, I had kind of been on and off from school, take a semester off, go, you know, because when you got young kids, it's not always it's the to easiest do, yeah. to go back to back to mm-hmm. back. Um, but I was about 75 percent done uh, at that point. Uh, I made a bad decision uh, in 2009 to uh, be with the wrong people, doing kind of the wrong things, and ended up catching a, a couple of bullets and uh, a charge uh, for uh, assault with intent to rob and felony firearm. Um, the details of the story are less important than the, the right. point of the story. Mm-hmm. Um, so in 2009, I ended up, uh, you know, getting that charge, um, pleaded no contest, and uh, went to prison for 66 months. Okay. So from the years 2009 to the years 2014, um, when I was released, um, I was in Michigan Department of Corrections. Um, the thing that was unique about that is not just that I went there, but the way that I looked at it, my perspective. My perspective on it was that was finishing school for me. Okay. Um, I had already been, you know, somebody's father at that point. I had already graduated high school. I had already worked at um, various, you know, uh, larger companies um, because at the time when I uh, caught the case, I was really somewhere where I wasn't supposed to be doing something I wasn't supposed to do because I was a married father of three um, I was working at the Renaissance Center at the time, so okay. I had a decent enough job. Right. I was a student. Um, so this was really kind of like an offshoot of my normal right. life, um, and I you know, had to pay the cost. Yeah. So I had done all these other things, and now this, this prison portion kind of was like that humbling, that, that finishing school of, of understanding who I am okay. um, as a person, understanding um, what my personal strengths are, mm-hmm. um, understanding how can I survive uh, on my own, mm-hmm. um, you know, without the distractions of the outside world. Yeah. How can I improve my own self? Yeah. You know? Well, I want to, I want to stop you right there because yeah, there's, there's a, a piece in there too, that I think is really important because if, for you to go into that situation and find that perspective on it, the mental fortitude that that takes is substantial. Where does that come from? Because that's a far cry from I'm 15, 16 years old with a kid. Yeah. And now, and now this, so where does, where do you think you pick that up? Um, growing up, you know, um, we were raised by my mother, uh, unfortunately lost my father, uh, at the age of 15 okay. and, um, uh, no, sorry, 14. Okay. He didn't, he wasn't able to meet my, my, uh, son. Um, so I lost my father at the age of 14 and, um, just my kind of whole existence has been about, um, just trying to. I won't say survive. It's not like my life yeah. was threatened every right, day, right. but you know, I didn't have a lot of the the privileges, um, you know, maybe that that some other people had. For sure, um, and it created this this drive within me. Um, I seen my mother be an entrepreneur. My mother started with uh, selling Mary Kay okay. years ago. Yeah. I remember she used to make us go. 
Uh, it's so funny. She used to make us go. She would make these baskets um, on the holidays, okay. like uh, Valentine's Day, Christmas, so on and so forth. And they have this Mary Kay cosmetic stuff in it. And we used to have to go door to door in our complex and try and sell these. I baskets. love it. I love it. You know, and as a kid, I hated it. Like, I'm oh, sure. Man, why is she making us do this? But now, as a as an adult, as a grown man, I understand what it instilled in me. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, the, just the entrepreneurial spirit for one, but just also like the determination to when you want to do something, you have to actually get out, get active, yeah. you have to execute. Right. Um, my mother then moved over to uh, figuring out a way to purchase a barber shop, okay. um, and we, you know, helped her run that barber shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, until. I was at least 23, 24. Okay. And um, just seeing her as a single black woman um, strive the way that she did to provide for us and to try to create something better for us. Yeah. That is where that sense of uh, providing for that sure I, that I really got. A thousand percent. If you, you know? if you from that young of an age are getting that type of an influence, yeah. it's no wonder you came out of there with that that mental strength of going into anything with, yes. you know, I'm going to pull the best out of this. And that's, that's, and I've always kind of been a positive person to yeah, begin with. That's awesome. But that right there kind of gave me that extra little bit that I needed. Like when I knew, when I went in and I knew I had a, a set amount of time, mm-hmm. I said that I'm going to take this time and I'm going to focus on uh, improving myself. Yeah. I'm going to focus on setting myself up to win. Uh, I like to say all the time, um, I lost five years of my life. So when I come home, I have to be ready to hit the ground running. For sure. And all of my counterparts, all of my peers um, are five years ahead of me. Mm-hmm. So in order for me to catch up, I have to hit the ground running. I don't have no margin of error. Right. And I really treated it like that. Yeah. Um, in that time, uh, that, that 66 months, I uh, definitely learned a lot about myself. But I also took it upon myself to write a book. Um, I took it upon myself to uh, educate others while I was there. I couldn't tell you how many people's business plans I looked over <laughs> or, you know, help uh, with their ideas to develop their ideas and things yeah. like that. Um, and that was a part of my healing. That was a part of yeah. my uh, rehabilitation. That was a part of what I felt like was uh, what I owed to society for the transgressions that I had yeah. you know, offered um, by breaking the law. So uh, it was just important to me to redeem myself in that way, um, but also to show like my rehabilitation by being active and intentional about improving myself. For sure. Not only mentally, but also, you know, physically um, and and uh, my, my morals and values. Yeah. Now, you you had mentioned uh, previously that you gave a speech at one point. Yes. Was that, oh, yes. Was that during your, your 66 months? That or? was my, fr- like, it wasn't, I won't say that was my first speech. I did okay. speeches as, like, you know, a kid right. in class yeah, or yeah. something like that. But my first true, like, public speaking opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, We had a uh, Black History Month event and uh, I wrote a um, an essay or like a speech um, about uh, this may be controversial, (laughs) but it is what it is. Um, But the the essay was about how um, Martin Luther King's um, philosophies and his um, initiatives maybe hurt the black community uh, at the time. Um, because it, re- it, it forced us to not shop with our own people, but to shop other places, bigger places that benefited other people. So a lot of the small black owners, uh, business owners suffered because now instead of you having to go to, you know, Bubba's shop around the corner, now you could go to Woolworth or I'm aging myself. (laughs) (laughs) You can go to some of these other stores uh, that maybe you couldn't go to before. Um, It, 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 there's other contexts and there's a lot other uh, uh, to it, but um, I I was commissioned to to uh, offer that speech. When I offered that speech, the points that I made um, really resonated with everyone, and the way that I delivered it really resonated mm-hmm. with everyone. When I um, was finished with the speech, I had at least twenty people come up to me afterwards to shake my hand and to have a conversation with yeah. me and stuff like that. Um, and that's kind of when I really realized that um, speaking to people. 
um, may be something that I, I have an affinity for. Yeah. Uh, and ever since I've done a few other, you know, speaking engagements, mm-hmm. um, but I realized that that's something that I really want to dig deeper into. For sure. Well, and, and I had an opportunity to see your doctoral your Walsh X as yes. we, as we put it together yes. and, and have you actually give the, uh, a presentation recorded that we actually have out on our YouTube channel. Yes. Go and see that. You'll please. see it. It's very cool. <laughs> and when that came across, uh, you know, both Tara and I had seen it and just said like, wow, like it was, it was so obvious that you had done this and that you were comfortable doing it. You yeah. had a great way of presenting it. And it was so different than what we were used to seeing. And it was so nice, but it sounds like, based on and what i'm hearing is you're you're good with different like give me different please and yeah please. because it, it's it needs to be and i think the fact that you took that personality and moved it into something where maybe the situation could have been better of course but at the same time you've become such an incredible person because of that background absolutely and you had the opportunity it sounds like to grow up with with a mom that was that was like a go getter yeah. i'm not going to sit back i got i got kids i'm not going to sit back and just let life happen yeah I'm going to make it happen. And I'm going to kind of go and get it on my own. Exactly. I'll go work for somebody, which is absolutely 100% okay. That's mm-hmm. what I've been doing my whole life. Right. But um, I will have the drive and the determination to to try and set my own up. For sure. You know, for sure. And it takes, a, you got to have kind of uh, uh, some uh, intestinal fortitude. Oh, yeah. You know, to, <laughs> to, to, to make some of these moves. Big time. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, all right. So you, so you get out and now you got a little bit of college left. Yes. So you go back to Baker. Yes. All right. And you yes. finish up there. Yes. So how did, how did the restart process work? And then what took place after that? So I, when I came out, I would have been, that was 2014. I would have been 32. Okay. Um, and I had set a goal before I even left in my own mind that when I come home, I'm going to hit the ground running. Part of that uh, goal, part of the execution of that goal was to uh, be through with my master's by 40. Okay. Um, I set that goal. I looked at that goal every day. I, I repeated it to myself um, and just really indoctrinated it in my own head that, you know, this is what I need to do. Right. Um, so, yes, I came home in 14, finished uh, with the bachelor's degree at Baker. Um, and I was like, well, I need to get this master's degree mm-hmm. um, because this is part of my goal. This is what I know is going to ascend me. Mm-hmm. Um, and how am I going to make that happen? Um, I looked at Baker's program and they had, you know, decent enough program. Um, but then I came across, I was looking for schools that were good um, or highly rated for business okay. because that has always been my forte. For sure. I've been consulting businesses really since I was, you know, probably 20 years old okay. of just, you know, how to, to make them happen. So I knew I wanted to do something that was business. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I looked up schools that had the best like business programs, of course, Walsh right. was, you know, top of the top of the list. Um, so it was an easy choice, easy yeah. decision to come to Walsh and start my master's program. Seamless, seamless way to start. Um, got my classes scheduled, um, did everything online. I said, I was like, I'm going to come and do on campus, uh, you know, because I had finished my yeah. Baker um, degree online. Okay. But then um, I say, well, okay, when I come to Walsh, I'm going to go to campus because I want that feeling again of being like in a class with right. the professor, being able to ask questions, interact, so on right. and so forth. Um, I started uh, Walsh in 19. And you know so, what happened. So it didn't in 20. go well. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> that original you know, plan didn't Yeah, happen. you know what happened yeah. in 20. The world yeah. shut down. Oh, so yeah. um, everything was just all online, which is okay for me because I do very well there. Right. Like, um, I know a lot of people say, yeah, I could never really be disciplined enough to, you know, right. go online, so on and so forth. Yeah. For me, it's easy. Yeah. Well, and there's a lot of things that we structure in a way of like, let's, let's meet you where you're at. Yes. Like, I yes. mean, that's always been the fun thing for us is we have, we have students that we hear from all the time. And, and some of them are like, look, I was a, I was strictly an in-class person and that's fine. We offer that too, if that's what you want. 
But there's also those that go, I was an in-class person until I realized that online means that I can go work full time yep. and I can, I can, you know, I'm a 4am person. Great. Yep. I'll do my classes at 4am. It's not that big of a deal. It fits you where you are. And at six o'clock when class starts, I don't have to be trying to leave work at five, exactly. rush, get in the car, get to class, have all my stuff ready. Right. No, I'm sitting in front of my computer yep. at home yeah. in a comfortable position right. with some food, know, with some food, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, For sure. and, and Walsh is just to very accommodating yeah. um, in that way that, you know, not only what they offer, but how they offer it. Um, but then also like the staff, you yeah. know, the staff was just always yeah. so friendly, helpful, you know, yeah. but, and, you know, and that's been, you know, and I, I'm a little bit biased, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> <Me too. laughs> but I also find like uh, in general, our faculty is not only are they really intelligent, but they're mm, intelligent yes. because they come out of the field they're teaching. And so, so many times they're not just, like I, I had multiple professors when I was going through my master's that were like, yeah, we're not really going to use the textbook. We're going to talk about how this actually works. Yeah. My actual experience. Yeah. I've seen that with uh, many professors where they will hearken back to their own experiences and use that to teach, you know, whatever the concept is that they're teaching. Yeah. Um, and that's so much more powerful than just, oh. okay, read chapter such and such, you know? Right. Yeah. No, it's, it's wonderful that way. And I, I have seen that that's, that seems to be the experience across the board yeah. is it's been, it's been great. And even in concepts that shouldn't make any sense to me, because when it comes to analytics, I, oh man, yeah. I hate it. Oh, <laughs> statistics. Yeah. Oh. If you, I took the class and passed it, but if yeah. you ask me today, like, what is the bell curve? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's the one that looks like a bell. It looks like, yeah, it looks yeah. like a bell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So you go into your, so you go into your masters, but yes. you didn't decide to do just do one masters. You did dual. What yes. brought you to that point? Um, I'm, uh, uh, must be a sadomasochist because <laughs> <laughs> I, lo I love like this. I love the due dates. I love the cramming last minute trying to get ready for a test. I love the papers due at, at, at 12 midnight and you're at 10 30. Okay. I only got two paragraphs, <laughs> you know, like yeah. I done that. Um, and I think I just gotten so used to it and gotten into like this groove with okay. school to where, um, it just kind of became, I won't say easy because my classes weren't necessarily yeah. easy and I had a lot of stressful days, For sure, but um, overall, I just felt like it was just kind of natural yeah. for me personally. Yeah. So, so the MBA makes sense. That's an all encompassing yes. thing. But then you tacked on marketing. Yes. Marketing is pretty, pretty specific. So what, what, what made you want to tack that one on? You know, I love marketing. Um, I have pigeonholed myself, unfortunately, into customer service. Okay. Um, I'm actually looking to make a pivot mm -hmm. out of customer service into I, marketing. I think you are going to find that that's a lot easier than you think. Okay. You I, just gave I will, me so I will tell you as, so I'm also marketing faculty here. Okay. So I get to okay. teach a lot of the marketing classes here. And one of the things I find is that a lot of people come in and they don't have the customer experience background mm -hmm. that marketing requires marketing. The best marketers there are, are coming out of a space where they understand what the customer wants. Bingo. Yes. So if you're coming out of the customer experience space, you can, all you need to do is go, this is, this is what they want. Yeah. I talk to them all the time. This is what they want. So now I'm going to market to that. Because I'm going to tell the story. We offer that thing. I'm just, you're just not telling the story the right way. So go talk to them the way they want to hear it and make sure you're solving their problem. They know there's a problem. Go solve it for them. You just made a connection for me that I will be adding to my resume. Good. Um, that I owe the career service lady. Um, I'll get that to you soon. Katie? Or uh, Cheryl? No, Cheryl. Cheryl. Oh, and Cheryl's, Cheryl's yeah. probably, she's probably like, Nick, what is going on? You're supposed to send this to me two weeks ago. Um, but no, you just gave me something because there is a parallel there mm -hmm. of understanding the customer in a more intimate way um, to be able to to sell them the things <laughs> that they want and need. Exactly. Um, and I, I will alter my resume now. Kind yeah. of see if I can parallel For those sure. two. Because that's uh, what it, transferable yeah. skill. So the thing, yeah, there you go. And the thing that we talk about all the time is it's in marketing in particular, I'm not selling you a product. Mm -hmm. If I was selling you a product, I'm not going to do great at that. Mm -hmm. But what I am going to sell you is an emotion and yep. I'm going to sell you an outcome. And I'm going to sell you something that at the end of this, you're going to be proud that you did. Yes. It's, it's not, I'm not coming in to, for you to earn a degree and do it. That's fine. I want you to earn a degree, but that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to give you the experience that at the end of this, you have a seat at the table Yes. and I have a seat at the table where there's decisions being made and they value the input I have because I can have those conversations in a very clear and concise way that makes sense for the future. 
and you're going into it with the mindset of I'm coming out of customers. I know your customer better than you know your customer. Yeah, yeah for sure. That's what you're here for. Their pain points, yeah. the things they love, the things they hate. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I could go down a marketing whole thing, but we won't do that. That's <laughs> no, that's bring me back. Let's have a marketing <laughs> pod. I'm with it. Let's do it. Let's um, do it. so, okay. So now you, so you go through your, your dual MBA, mm-hmm. your, your dual MBA and, and masters of marketing. You get through that. And now you're going to add on doctoral. Yes. Now you said Amy came to you and said, look, this is, this is really for you. Yes. And now even in this conversation that I've had with you today, mm-hmm. I can already tell that's exactly why she came to you. You yeah. are, you're, you are the prime candidate for it. Uh, you have a great mindset for it, but it also takes a lot of perseverance. It, it takes somebody with your mental, your mental strength to go, look, I'm going to take this on and we're going to do it. And not only are we going to do it, we're going to, we're going to crush this. That is my thought for and sure. And I can tell that already from you. That's my thought. Like I'm, I'm really big on trying to finish the things that I start. Mm -hmm. Um, But then also just finding ways to advance myself. I think one of my one of my motivations behind kind of like this uh, lifetime student, you know, uh, uh, idea or or, or philosophy that I have Mm -hmm. um, is really if I'm being just kind of transparent and introspective, it's really uh, motivated by the fact that I am a felon. Mm-hmm. So that felony, um, already I know that I'm going to have to have certain hurdles and mm-hmm. challenges um, based on my background. So I think kind of as part of like my proving to the world mm-hmm. that, you know, I'm not this horrible criminal person right. is through educating myself. It's not logical all the time. Like it's not necessarily the most logical idea. But I just know that that is kind of part of my motivation of sure. why I continue to um, educate myself and maybe in some cases overeducate myself. But I don't think that that's really a thing. I don't no. think you can ever have enough education. No, because again, you're not, I know that a lot of times people are viewing these degrees as like, oh, I'm just doing this for a piece of paper. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. I, at the end of the day, I don't care if you, I don't care if you get the piece of paper. What right. I care about is that at the end of the, at the end of the day, and, and this is really class by class and really even week by week in, in lectures. But what I want is at the end of that, I want you to have something that you can immediately take into the workforce right. and immediately be able to apply. And at the and at the end of the entire degree, I want you to go into any situation and feel confident that you can have a conversation with any person there yes. that is in any field. And that's, that is the heart of a Walsh degree is I want you to have a seat at the table where decisions are being made because yep. your opinion matters. It is, it is backed. Respected. It's respected. It is backed with an education that people trust. Right. And you know that when you go into these things, I'm not only am I educated beyond belief in this, and especially if you've gone all the way through to the doctoral, like you have, you have not only the education of things you've been told, but you are resourceful in a way that I will find the answer if I don't have it. Right. That's, right. That is the, the heart of portion. a Walsh degree. That's a, that's a big thing. And that's, that's really a, a skill and a quality that is not the easiest to find as a hiring manager for the, the yeah. last 10 years. Yeah. Um, I guess it wouldn't be 10 years for like maybe the last eight years. Mm -hmm. um, I find that having someone who knows how to find things, Uh, who knows how to be pragmatic in their solutions, all the difference in the world, man, that can definitely make the difference that can make your job as the manager or the leader harder Mm -hmm. or easier, depending on the person that you bring. Absolutely. You know, um, let me bring something back really quick yeah. to um, another one of my motivations um, for, you know, the continuance of my schooling mm-hmm. um, is income. Yeah. Let's just be real. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I want to get to a certain income bracket yeah. that has escaped me. Um, I have this number personally, and, and a lot of people will probably laugh at it because they've made it. But I have this number in my head. I've been chasing 100K a year. Mm-hmm. For my whole, as long as I can remember being a professional. Yeah, absolutely. That's been my number. I want to make 100K a year. And at some point I'll make that and I want to exceed that. Absolutely. But that has really been like kind of the motivation behind the schooling. I would just feel like if I have um, the education and the credentials, mm-hmm. uh, somebody should see that and see the value in me and say, here, here's, you know, a job for 100K right. doing this. Um, currently I haven't been able to break 65 and that's just me maybe giving too much information, but being transparent. No, absolutely. You know, I, but I think that's good though. And I think I, I, 
I, I'm a big proponent of, of wage transparency. I think that there's a big thing in there. And I think there's a lot of times that people don't understand what they should be looking for. Mm-hmm. And I think that there's a, there's a big gap in confidence between, between what somebody deserves and earns and a confidence level in which they're going to get it. Oh man, that's so, that's so and profound. I think that's that, so true. I think that if you, I, I, I mean, I've known you for two seconds. What I, if I was to meet you and have this same conversation on the street, the number one thing I would tell you is go be a speaker, get on the speaker series because you have a background that people don't have. Yeah. There is a yeah. 2% I, I, is great. Doctoral student, 2% wonderful. That number drops to 0. 0.0001 if you talk about people <laughs> yes. that spent 66 months in prison and then got a doctoral degree. Yeah. That doesn't oh, yeah. exist. So if you go out on the speaker series and you, you're a motivational person to just listen to, so go out and tell that story. Tell that story to any school that'll listen. Go tell that story to any group of people that will listen and give that presentation because that is where your, your dollars are going to be. You know, I... I I did not come in here expecting to get you have <laughs> dropped so many gems on me today. I swear, like it's oh man, it's beautiful. Well, and I, I, I appreciate that though. And that is something that I could go to work doing every day mm-hmm. and not feel like, oh, I gotta get up and go to work. Yeah. You know, like no. that would be uh oh, that yeah. would be great. Go tell your story. Yes. Yeah. I'd love to. Yeah. And I'd love to I'd love to translate it into other people's lives mm-hmm. and perspectives and Absolutely. show them how it parallels to maybe something that they're going through Absolutely. or feeling or a lack of confidence yeah. and whatever, because you said that word and that's so true to me is that is one of the biggest things that happened in this whole situation is that I have taken a, a hit into my confidence um, of, of not my abilities, but just how I'm viewed. Even right. people who never know that I was in prison. Right. Most of the people who interact with me, if I told them I spent 66 months in prison and got shot twice, they would be like, wait, what? No, I, wait, there's, wait, what there's, there's, had you not told me that, I, there's no way. There's <laughs> no way I would have ever believed that. Every time. But I think a lot of that is, is you have to get out of your own way. Yeah. And, and yeah, don't yeah. It, it, go into Every person you meet, if it's the first time that you've ever met them, a lot of times, even people that you've met over and over again, mm-hmm. if they don't know that story, all they know is your personality and your personality has got a hundred K written on it all day long. Oh man, I need it. So do, so use that, go, yes. go with that confidence because I, I have, I've heard you now on a couple different things and on your presentation side of things, I would listen to your story all day long. You know, that's, that's, uh, I needed that. That confidence boost right there is big. And I really appreciate you for that. Well, I am looking forward to, uh, in a few years from now, hearing about the speaker circuit that you're on. (laughs) Maybe I get a real TED talk. (laughs) (laughs) I, I, I honestly get yourself into some speakers and then do that because I, I really do think that you have a great story to tell. I love, I love everything that you have up to this point, but I want to close out by talking about what is, what is the future for you? Now I know I just threw something new at you, but no, throw that aside. It, it, but what is the future for you? What is the next five years? What is your goal? What are you looking to accomplish? Mm-hmm. And is there something that the Walsh community can come together to get behind, to help you accomplish those goals? Um, thank you for that. Um, yes. In, in the next 60 months, uh, I would, I will, be finished with uh, my doctoral degree. Okay. Um, I will be Dr. Nicholas Peoples. I love it. I can't uh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I I have kind of two directions because I'm always kind of a plan A, plan B yeah, type guy. That's great. So, uh, you know, plan A would be, I, I would love to be in a position to um, um, speak mm-hmm. and or teach. Yeah which they kind of Absolutely. interchange, you yeah. know, um, I, I would love that ability and that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, currently, uh, I, I have a, an affinity to small business owners yeah. and micropreneurs. Um, I love speaking to them. I love listening to their ideas mm-hmm. and showing them how they can expand. So um, in the next 60 months, I would love to be doing that as uh, one of my incomes. For sure. Um, plan B or one uh, A um, would be um, I would be in marketing position. Yeah. Um, marketing manager, marketing coordinator, you know, whatever it may mm-hmm. be for um, 
in one or multiple uh, small companies, yeah. um, just offering different ideas, um, helping them with their digital marketing strategies, with their you know physical marketing strategies, with their budget spins, with um, all of these different things. But doing this as my day job, I already moonlight and do some of that stuff now. Right. Um, but at like as my everyday job, as opposed to waking up uh, every day and going and sitting in front of this email, you know, doing uh kind of this menial customer service yeah. work. Yeah. Um I'm I'm I've done that. I am good at it, but I'm over it. Yeah. So like I really in 60 in 60 months I want to be uh living in Phoenix, Arizona. All right. And um doing speaking and or marketing as my day job. I love it. I love it. Well, I Nick, it has been so fun to talk to you. Oh, this man. has been great. This, no, I, I love this. And I am really looking forward to, as you get closer to the end of your doctoral and, and you start to see what, what the future is looking like, that bright, the light at the end of that tunnel is getting real bright. Yes, I'm, I'm I working. Can, I cannot wait to check back in with you and kind of oh. see where things are going and uh, and I'd love to help in any way we can. I would love to come back and speak to you. Yeah. I really appreciate you guys having yeah. me here. Absolutely. Uh, my dissertation will be about um, using, um, oh man, using, um, uh, uh, blockchain. Sorry. Yeah. I had a brain fart. <laughs> using blockchain in the music industry. Love that. Um, and once I complete that, I would love to be a subject matter expert, um, on that and, and, you know, offering speeches there as well. For sure. Um, can I plug myself? For sure. Absolutely. I hope <laughs> you do. <laughs> um, please, uh, I, I am a business consultant. Um, let me look at one of these cameras. <laughs> I am a business consultant. Go to nicholaspeoples.com. You can learn more about who I am and the services that I offer. Uh, if you'd like to purchase a copy of my book, uh, it is on Amazon. It is called The Small Business Man, how do I not know the name? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to plug yourself. You can't remember your name. <laughs> it is called um, The Small Business Guide to Market Planning by Nicholas Peoples. It is available on Amazon as well as on my website. Um, if you'd like to support me, that's kind of one of the best ways to For do sure. it. Uh, again, I appreciate you, bro. Yeah. It's, it's been wonderful. I've learned something. I love going somewhere. <laughs> Generally, I like something. to sit here and I like to learn from you. So this oh, has been man. great. This no. is a great exchange of uh, of, uh, of information. Nick, I, I'll make sure that we get the link from you to both your website and your book. We'll Thank get you. those into the into the link when we post this as well. But I really appreciate this. This has been really, really fun. Yes. And, uh, and like I said, I can't wait to hear where things are for the future. Thank you. Thank you. I can't yeah. wait to come back. Love it. Thank you. <laughs>